shadows on the bedroom wall Silhouettes of memories that I can't recall Trying to be ready for the car Trying not to fall Ready for the landfall Rolling way too slow to win this human race Gotta travel light through this desirable maze The miles I leave Traces on my face, signs of falling grace, filling up the empty space. But heaven knows I'm getting so much better every day. Yeah, baby, can't you see? It's easy as they be seen. So here's where I'm thinking of fishing, which is the cliffs down in front of St Aldrey's Bay Holiday Park. I've been here before, it's not really known as a big fish venue, but they get some good fish come through, if that makes sense, there's a chance of catching. Now this is the time to go looking. I'm up on the cliffs here, you can see the steps down. So I've waited, I can't fish a low tide, low tide is still going out, it's hard to believe half a mile, it just disappears. The bigger the tide, the further out it's going to go. I can actually see way in the difference, it looks like a bit of reef or something sticking up there. So it's still got a way to go. But here you can see I've got sort of sand and weed, then I've got some broken ground with pebbles, then a patch of sand and then the main bank down there which looks a lot closer than it really is. By the time I go down there I'm going to be like a little speck but this is the time and I certainly advise anybody if they do have the time and they don't know the beach area is to take the trouble to actually don't fall down the steps Graham, don't fall down the steps it's wet and horrible Take the trouble to go down and look at low water, maybe find out what's in front of you, where you're casting, what your bait's going to be lying over. Trust me, it is time well spent. If you can do it, I suggest you do it. I know this beach a little bit, but nevertheless, it changes each year. I can see a slightly deeper curve out there, deeper curve out there, but I'm looking for somewhere that the water's holding up there. The tide's gone out. If there's, let's say, a pool or a puddle in there, that might be an area that's slightly deeper that I can cast to at high water. And it is not an unpleasant place to fish other than the weather. It's very nice here. This is convenience. At my age, convenience does count. I'm not walking three miles across horrible areas just to uh, have some good fishing. I've done all that business. Now I just want to go fishing and catch something. See, from up here, some rough ground over there. I don't want to get caught in that with my lead. Possibly down here. And if you find a good area, you can mark it down here, close in, you know, if you find somewhere. I feel it's shallow up there. When it fills in, you think there's channels and creeks across this way. That's where it's going to feed in first. So that could be where fish follow that in and then come in this inshore bit to feed. Who knows? Let's go and have a look. Other people out there for a walk. No umbrella, they must be more keen than me because I have at least a bought an umbrella with me. So you can see where I am at the moment. <clears throat> Fishing up there, that's about 80 yards to reach the sand here. And already down here, lots of small casts, I guess small lugworm. Let's have a walk around a bit. Got to watch it doesn't get very, very soft very quickly on those mud banks. Now you think, from looking up on the cliffs, this one it's a short strip of sand, but as you can see, it's quite a big strip of clean sand, so you shouldn't lose any gear over it, providing you don't get weeded up with vast amounts of weed. It should be clear. Just gonna have a walk to the edge. Oh, this is a huge area. I can't show you too much there because the uh, camera's gonna get wet. Probably the only stupid person walking around the middle of a deserted beach in wind and rain, but there you go, it's got to be done. <clears throat> and then back here, if you can see that, lots of nooks and crannies and little creek bits, and I feel sure that the fish, when that tide floods in, when I come down tonight, hopefully, if the wind stays in this direction, you can see all these creeks and channels, I believe they might work around those, and then come in and then feed up on this stretch here. Now look, I can't reach that from up there. Mm, probably as, as the tide's going down a bit, but 
Ooh, they get blasted, big time. There's somebody's lying down there. Buried, been there a while. Oh, <laughs> oh my word, the day looks young and fit as far as I'm concerned. It's like somebody came across with a rage of wind then. Well, well, well. You lose a lead, you gain a lead. I do love a bit of scavenging, beach scavenging. Not mine, I can't afford those fancy ones. Obviously, I'm going to be late back now because I'm going to have to have a walk around. The other thing is if you're going along a low tide, look at all these casts, look at all these casts here, worm casts. Is if you're looking for leads and look gear like this, I tend to find easiest access. There's a steps down from the cliff from the holiday park. Within 50 yards either side of that, people get lazy, they just want to walk down, they don't want to walk along the beach. They stop there, so they tend to lose the gear in this area. And the other time they lose the gear is when they get pushed up at high water and they can't reach the sand and they're casting in here. So just along the fringe, fringe of the rocks here, sometimes, sometimes you will pick up a bonus lead or a rig. And it's not a bad thing to get it out of the environment anyway. We're just walking along the edge, scanning for any bits of nylon which might lead you, like this to a treasure trove find. Or indeed, you might see the, the colour of the cap of the lead. There's actually a lot of weed up there towards high water. Why is there not weed here? Does it get sucked out and when high tide comes it gets pushed back in? Or does it stay up there and just float off at high water? Which means if I do come down I might want to come a little bit earlier so that I've got a, a bait, albeit in shallow water, but I think at least it would be clear from the weed. We'll find out tonight. But I am here with good vision, good vision, take two, and I'm here with good vision looking at the two rod tops, but there's just a huge pull to the left. I think it's the tide and I think it's the wind together. So if that couples up with all this weed that we saw this morning, pushes it into bellies in the line, it's going to really trip my leads out, and drag me right down the side. And in honesty, I really don't know what's going to happen. If I get a fish and it's not raining, I'll try and get you people at least a picture of it. But I am down here. And I'm here with good vision looking at the two rod tops, but there's just a huge pull to the left. I think it's the tide and I think it's the wind together. So if that couples up with all this weed that we saw this morning, pushes it into bellies in the line, it's going to really trip my leads out and drag me right down the side. And in honesty, I really don't know what's going to happen. If I get a fish and it's not raining, I'll try and get you people at least a picture of it. But I am down here. Bates, I've gone for my special rig, I'm going to a special rig, I think it's, a, I think somebody calls it a place rig. Just two hooks off there, I clip the bottom one down, I've had to clip it today because the wind's there, the other one's going to blow in the wind, drag a bit so I get less distance. Bait is a double wrap of squid and mackerel, fillet, both fresh frozen and both caught by my fair hand, the squid and the mackerel. It's about time they come out my freezer and got posted out there. So that's all I'm fishing with. I'm not bothering with worms. I've no ragworm, no lugworm, no tiny hooks. I'm just fishing with a pair of rods. I have got my third rod here. Do you know what? I'm not even going to bother to throw it out. I'll just go with the two I've got and just see what comes along. I feel if there's a dogfish out there, he's going to smell that fresh mackerel. I'm just looking at my left hand rod there. It's so windy it's hard to register a bite. But I had a bit of a bow in it and I noticed it sprung straight, there it goes again, there's a tap, tap. That could, could be a bite. I'll put the head cam on and I'm going to go down a bit closer. When I cast the lead out straight out, it sort of moved around in the wind. I now don't see the bite, I don't think it's tripped out. It might have done, hard to tell. I'm going to crank down to the grip lead. 
get them both under tension. A lot of the bites you can see, they might initially be a pull down, but if a fish grabs the bait and the moves down tight, he'll trip the lead and that makes the rod top spring back like this and comes back. What's called a slack line bite. Look there. I do not honestly know whether it's just the wind and the weed on the line that's dragging that. It's, it's doing a little bit of bounce back, but it's not sort of pulling it down. The temptation is just to see if that does progress into a proper bite. Man, I've got to get some gloves on. I'm still not sure about that left hand rod. It seems that line's pulled down. I think I might have cast too far left with it. And the wind and the weed has got it. I think I'll crank in, guys, anyway. You know, sometimes you get lucky and you don't always see the bite. And yeah, I can't, I, I don't think I, I went that far down to be honest. Let's wind down. What I'm going to do is walk right down and then pull it in straight rather than pull against the flow of the current and stuff like that. So I'm walking down the beach. You can see my line, I'm getting straighter and straighter and straighter. I don't want to be pulling it against any weed, which I can see there's tons of weed in. Let's crank down now, see if it... There's, I think there's a load of weed on there, or oh, there's fish. The truth is, people, I don't honestly know. I'm just going to try and keep it coming. Whatever it is. If it's only we I feel no kicks at all. It's just balls, I think it's probably weed. Oh, it stopped me totally now. Oh it's fish, 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 fish. I felt the kick, just felt a kick. Well if that came as a dead weight. Can I, dare I, dare I even think of a ray? Dare I even think about it? I don't think it's an eel. I don't think it's an eel. Oh, please be efficient. Not, let me not be completely stupid. It's an eel. Oh, he's going back in. Get him up on the next wave. Here he comes, here comes a wave. And there comes, oh yeah, get right in. Mr. Mr. Conga Eel. Look at this one, boys. <laughs> oh, I hope we can see it. I hope you can see it jaw hooked as well. Oh, I'm tangled now. Why did I, why did I hold it like that? It's spun up. Make sure when you put your reel down, boys, you don't put it in the gravel, I put it up on the rocks, hopefully he spun me up a bit, there we go, really nice conger reel, I'm going to unhook him and get him back, somewhere I've got the pliers, I'm trying to keep the pliers on me now, there he's off, Let's get him back. Don't put the pliers down on the gravel. Look, okay, he wants to go down. He wants to go down to the waves. Let's get him down there. Don't want a booty. Get in. Get right in. A fish. Oh. Well, I sort of admitted I saw the bite, but I'm not going to say I was guaranteed to see it. I thought it was a drop back, but I generally wasn't sure. Let's get rigged up and back out there.
Well, if he's still on people, there is actually a second eel on here. It was a really fast bite. It took me in the weed. He might have come off, I don't know. Let's have a look in the weed. But there was an eagle here. He's come off. How many fish have I lost? Messing around, that was a good con grill. I thought I'm not gonna film it, I'm gonna crank all the way in. And there you are, I lost it. Well, 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 well that was two congas. But one I lost trying to get you guys, it's your fault actually, trying to get you guys footage. It wasn't a big eel, it was a really, really good bite. Anyway, that's the way it is. Well, people I've actually got, made up for the one I lost, got a second one, an even bigger one. That's a really nice one here, but there's a bait, it's a real slam pull down bite. Really pleased with that one. And just jaw hook there. I'll try and pick him up to show you, but I think he's going to go nuts. That's a nice size one there. <laughs> Do you know, that was a result. And a previous catch prior to the one I just lost was somebody with a retriever dog that nearly ate everything. So there you go. Real beaut. Jaw hooked, I can get him straight back. But there we go, you can see him. What a cracker. I'd say he's best part of best part of four feet that one. So there we go people, he's going back. He's pushing in. He wants to go back on his own. Look at that. How's that for instinct? I might get one more shout at a bite here. Different species would be nice. But well pleased with what I've got, and a beautiful, over there, look. Absolutely stunning sunset there. Cold behind this umbrella, another guy's turned up here. I think he's a bit late to the party, this one. And I'll probably cast those two a bit close together, but this might, at uh, 6.15, might be my last cast, I don't know. I could get a horrendous tangle, I'm not sure. If I get a pull down on the right hand one of the tide going that way, he's going to slam into that line if I do get a, a fish hooked up. But uh, yeah, well pleased at the moment, three congas, very good. Last one was a nice fish. Probably won't see anything because it's nearly dark, it's got dark really quickly. It's like no twilight. The last two nights I've had a go, it's been getting dark really early. But I have got a head torch and of course I've got... I've got the trusty flashlight here as well, so... I can actually light everything up, should anything else come along. Bit of a bite on that right hand rod then, by the look of that. Let's see if I can get the head cam on, but I might not be able to use it without the floodlight. I'm getting some bites up there, boys, on this left hand rod, there it is. You might or might not be able to see that, I don't know. It's probably a dogfish. That's what I'm getting the feeling it is, it's not it's not aggressive enough for conga. I'm going to put the, I've got the head torch on, so I can't wear the head cam. So I'm going to put the camera in my mouth and see if I can balance it. And it is, of course, nothing, but there was a fish there.
Okay guys, here's the bite. That is a bite. There he goes, look, 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 look. I think it's a small conger. I'm gonna take a gamble and say that. Look, look, look. Good boy. Good boy. I'm a bit of slack. You can actually pull line if he wants there. There, yeah, look, 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 look. Now I'm getting near packing up time, so I'm just gonna let him eat this one if I can. And see if we get one last fish out of it. Right, I'm going to have to put this camera down and get the other head torch. I can't talk because I've got the camera in my mouth. It is a fish on here, I think it's a dogfish. Getting near the waves now, which is when we tend to lose most of the fish. Guys, I'm calling this one a bull hus. It is, yeah. You can tell that by the size of his mouth and the markings down there, much bigger than dogfish. I think that's the first one I caught off Mrs. Aldi's beach. So this one much bigger people. Hopefully you get some form of uh, picture there, but that one's a bull hus. I think it's need time to pack up.